2017 featured a plethora of high-profile cases, some that received national attention, from child abuse to murder. We covered some of the more arresting cases this year. Here's ABC 10 CW5's Kellen Buddy with more. We begin with the most prominent case from this year, a crime that led police on a five-day manhunt. On July 8th, 37-year-old Eric Ruska brought co-worker 28-year-old Leanne Wilmoth fishing and sexually assaulted her, threatening her and her family if she did not cooperate. After the sexual assault, Ruska took her back to shore, placed her in his truck, and ratchet-strapped her to the front seat. Between July 8th and the 14th, Ruska held Wilmoth against her will and sexually assaulted her numerous times in and around his vehicle as they drove through the Hiawatha National Forest, traveling through Marquette, Alger, and Delta counties. At 4.25 a.m. July 14th, Ruska was taken into custody without incident by Michigan State Police troopers inside a shell gas station on M28 in Munising. In November, he pleaded guilty to one count of kidnapping and three counts of aggravated sexual abuse. His sentencing is scheduled for February 7, 2018. A case that got national attention was the case of 33-year-old Kelly Cochran. In October of 2014, Christopher Carl Regan was reported missing out of Iron River. In late April of 2016, 33-year-old Kelly Cochran of Merrillville, Indiana, was arrested by U.S. Marshals in Wingo, Kentucky, where she waited to be extradited on multiple felony charges, including homicide and second-degree home invasion. In May, Cochran was extradited to the Upper Peninsula and was formally charged on May 16th on six felony charges. Cochran pleaded not guilty to all charges and declined an attorney. In September of 2016, Cochran appeared in Iron County Trial Court and more details were released. On February 14, 2017, Cochran's trial began and included testimonies from friends, neighbors, and family. On February 28, Cochran was found guilty of first-degree premeditated murder, along with five other felony counts. She was sentenced to life in prison without parole on May 10 of this year. A murder-suicide gone awry put a man behind bars for more than 20 years. On July 8, 2016, 66-year-old Alfred Sario was arrested for killing his stepdaughter, 29-year-old Jamie Lee James, in June, before turning the gun on himself. During the trial in August, experts were brought forth, including Dr. Scott Cantola, a pathologist at UP Health System Marquette. Sario testified on his own behalf saying he feared for his life after James made a threatening remark at him, which prompted him to pull the trigger. On August 18th, Sario was found guilty of first-degree murder and discharging a firearm at or near a building. On September 28th, Sario was sentenced to 25 to 40 years in prison. Another prominent court case from this year takes us to Cedarville. On September 9th, 2015, 43-year-old Jolene Eichhorn was found dead in the trunk of her car at the Cedar River State Harbor in Cedarville Township. That afternoon, then 48-year-old Gregory Eihander was arrested and arraigned in Menominee County District Court with bond set at $1 million. Later that month, Eihander was bound over to Circuit Court. The trial began February 13th and lasted eight days, and Eihander was convicted of second-degree murder. On May 1st, Eihander was sentenced to 40 to 50 years in prison for second-degree murder. He was given credit for 600 days already served. A wrongly convicted Ishpeming man was released this spring after a retrial. Back in 2014, 45-year-old Jason Sadowski was sentenced to 40 to 80 years in prison on one count of solicitation of murder and two counts of torture. He was convicted of holding two women against their will inside his karate dojo in Ishpeming. Almost two years after Sadowski was convicted, the Michigan Court of Appeals granted him a new trial. In March, his retrial started in Marquette County Circuit Court. Following testimonies from witnesses, officers, and doctors, Sadowski was found not guilty on all charges by a jury on March 17th. He was immediately arrested on a federal gun charge. He was in possession of a 9mm handgun at the time of the alleged crime. A week later, he was released on bond, and all charges were later dropped. A social media prank gone wrong led to the death of an 11-year-old boy. On the evening of March 14th, 2017, Police from the Marquette City Police Department responded to the home of 11-year-old Tyson Benz for a report of an attempted suicide. Upon arrival, Tyson was found unresponsive and transported to the University of Michigan Hospital in Ann Arbor. Tyson died on April 4th. An investigation into his death led police to the discovery of a social media prank in which Tyson's 13-year-old girlfriend posed as a friend and told him she was dead. The girl was charged in juvenile court with two misdemeanor-level offenses.
For ABC 10 and the CW5, I'm Kellen Buddy.